Hello and welcome back to our Vlandian night adventures and uh, oh, well, one of my parties just got captured, isn't that wonderful? Yes, that is great. Uh, good start, good start to the episode. Anyway, as you can no doubt tell, I am on the warpath. Oh yes, I have 501 units in my army and I am prepared to besiege none other than Tyol itself, because obviously in uh, one of the previous episodes we actually did attempt to encroach upon the Kuzate territory in the north here, and we were unable to for a variety of reasons. Very strong army on the opposing side was definitely one of them, and hopefully we will be able to do a little bit of a better job this time. And I think someone actually mentioned to me recently that um, my original goal, actually, wait a minute, uh, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna just take a quick look here. This guy's looking pretty weak, actually. I think I might be able to deal with him. I think I might be able to. So, let's see if we can do it. As you can see, he's already taking um, some pretty significant casualties as a result of actually trying to go into the siege here. But you can see that the garrison is quite significant already. Anyway, as I was just about to say. Um, someone mentioned to me recently that my initial goal, or shall we say the goal that I mentioned that I wanted to do, was to have an army of the most elite units that you could possibly have in the entirety of Calradia. I'm not entirely sure what elite means to you, obviously, because generally elite is subjective, because it might mean that I'm running around with a bunch of, I don't know, tier 6 regular units, or it might mean that I'm running around with noble units that are the maximum level they can be. I'm actually just going to show you my army right now. I might very well have a couple of units that are not, you know, not noble or anything like that, but uh, generally I'm running around with units that are tier 5 and above, and if there are any tier 3s or tier 4s, then I will try to level them up as fast as I possibly can. But you can see here... Every single unit I have is pretty much tier 4 or above. And I, I don't know whether to you that means it's elite or not, but in general, um, I have some militia because generally uh, I am going to be persuading units to join me and all that stuff. But otherwise, I have a number of these. These I have a massive amount of because they've been in my garrison for a very long time. And um, that's it. They've, they've just been there, and um, I think some vassals have actually dropped off a couple as well when they've gone there, and um, I've obviously picked them up as a result of that. Otherwise, I don't really have anything else uh, too dramatic. I do have quite a few Batanian Fian champions as well, and so on. So generally, my army is not that bad. I feel like it is quite strong. And I think we should be able to do quite a good job here against Monchug himself. As you can see, we actually have a pretty significant um, combat strength advantage over him. Uh, and he, he, ha he actually doesn't have that many heavy horse archers or heavy lancers. He has about 70 or so heavy horse archers, which obviously is much more than I would like him to have but I think we'll do all right, at least for the moment. So let's get our people into decent positions. My my archer presence is so pitiful. I'm, I'm literally face palming almost here, and it is not good. It is not good to have a, a literal, how many? 33, yes, 33 archers. That is never a good sign, is it? Especially when you're wanting to run around with a bunch of landy and sharpshooters and stuff like that. I mean, generally, I haven't really focused on getting those in quite some time anyway, so I guess I can't really blame anyone but myself. But anyway, the point is, hopefully we'll be okay here. Let's get my infantry to come up here a little bit more. I'm just going to try to survive here. That's all I really want to do. Let's tell my cavalry to charge in, because as you can see, they actually have the high ground in comparison to the opponent's cavalry. I don't know whether that really makes any difference really to cavalry units because they're already technically on the high ground because they're on horses. <laughs> so I don't know whether that really makes any, any difference. Um, but we are going to try and eliminate them as best we can. We do have some pretty good 
cavalry units, so I'm hopeful that we'll do alright, especially considering most of our cavalry units are indeed Sturgeons, and the Sturgeons are known for being very good mounted skirmishers indeed, and utilizing their thrown weapons to the greatest effect is going to be key in this initial clash of steel. Yes, that's, that's what we're going to try to do at least. And my infantry is going to be basically standing around about here. Where, where's the enemy? Oh, they, wow, they're, they're super far away. What? They're super far away. Okay. Sure. If you want to stand that far away while all of your cavalry get murdered, then I am all for it. That sounds good to me. That definitely sounds good to me. Now, I'm actually going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you something. Would you like to see a stream? of of banner lord I, I actually don't know how i'm gonna do that because um i'm only very um yeah, i i say this very loosely by the way i'm only knowledgeable i'm not i'm not gonna say i'm very knowledgeable but i'm only somewhat knowledgeable about video creation rather than streaming i i'm very very amateur when it comes to streaming so I'm not sure how the quality is going to be and I'm not sure how the, the whole thing is going to go because generally I do tend to cut out quite a lot of off-screen progression and stuff like that because most of the time I'll be playing uh, off-screen for about maybe half an hour, maybe an hour before I even start the episode because I have a bunch of micromanagement empire stuff to do and I generally tend to prefer doing that without showing you because it is just that tedious stuff that you've seen me do on screen a million times over and it's just not not very interesting so it really just depends on whether I start the stream after that or not and uh, if something then in indeed happens you know in the episode that requires a huge amount of um, I don't know, huge amount of micromanaging or whatever is, is that really entertaining? That's the point. I'm, I'm trying to make... Um, as entertaining content as I possibly can. Obviously, that is really subjective as well. You might think that this is this is terrible. You know, you might think that this particular battle is terrible, but my cavalry is actually doing a pretty decent job, and I'm not really having to do that much with them. But again, as I've mentioned in previous episodes, my main concern with my own prowess in combat is to literally just stay alive. That is literally all I want to do. That is my main goal in almost every aspect because if i don't then auto delegate is going to kick in and we're going to lose <laughs> or we're not going to lose but we're going to suffer many many casualties and i would prefer not to have that happen if at all possible but i guess my my original question is would you like to see a stream of banner lord that's basically my question so if you if you want to answer that then by all means you can but if you don't then or well, you know you don't have to i mean you know it's just a very you know, very casual question. You don't, you don't have to if you don't want to. You can just enjoy, sit back, and watch our cavalry charge into the opponent. And I don't even know whether I should really be doing this, to be honest. As you can see, we're actually sustaining quite a few casualties as a result of this. And I might be getting a little bit ahead of myself here. <laughs> Which is more than likely... Oh, dear. Okay. Oh, jump, jumpy, jumpy. Jump, jump, jump. Okay, yep. Perfectly fine, perfectly fine. Okay, no problem at all. Let's just run away very fast because I have a big target on my back and I am a bit worried about it. Okay, so yeah, we lost a whole bunch of cavalry in this particular skirmish. So let's regroup a little bit, shall we? Let's just regroup, take stock of what is actually going on here and not get ahead of ourselves too much because obviously that's the main thing that I tend to do. You know, I tend to rush in where everyone fears to tread and while that is extreme good fun for me and maybe for you as well to see that um it is usually ill-advised uh, in the in the great scheme of things because generally you don't want to get killed all right so we're gonna actually tell these guys to follow me now because it might very well make sense to oh <laughs> mm. They grind my gears. They grind my gears super hard whenever they do this, something like that. Whenever I'm just about to wind up an attack and they shoot me anywhere, it interrupts the attack. I feel like there should be maybe some kind of damage reduction. And I'm not talking about the damage actually being reduced in any way, but maybe like a, a flinch resistance or something like that. I know that that in real life is very 
uh, again, it, it's very subjective because obviously people have different pain tolerances and so on. But I think that because this is primarily a game about gaining stats and gaining traits and skills and becoming better and better and better all the way from zero, it might make sense to have some kind of trait that gives you a little bit of flinch resistance, as I say. So in other words, you can maybe attack, um, I don't know, five times every minute or, or, or twice every minute that uh, allows you to go through a particular attack. So if you have a two-handed, I think actually they do do that with two-handed weapons. I seem to remember that actually happening quite often with the previous Bruce. Wasn't it the previous, uh, wasn't it Bandit Bruce? I think it might have been Bandit Bruce. Bandit Lord Bruce, uh, he ran around with a two-handed sword and uh, generally he had some damage resistance. I seem to remember that he had some kind of resistance that enabled him to continue through the attack. So if, if he did get attacked by something, the damage was so minuscule that he would actually be able to continue his swing, which I personally felt was a very cool feature because especially with a two-handed weapon, you are indeed going to get shot, you're going to get hit, and all manners of other things. And having that small little damage resistance to help you out in those singular cases of um, getting murdered or something, then it's definitely something nice, you know, to be able to get a little bit of damage out before you inevitably perish or get shot in the face or, you know, anything like that. I mean, that's basically the same thing, isn't it? But still, you know. That kind of thing would be pretty cool to see throughout. I, I don't know whether it's maybe just a two-handed thing. Maybe it's just a two-handed thing. That might make more sense. But anyway, I'm actually going to tell my infantry to charge in here. I'm going to be extremely careful now. I am very low in HP, and there are a lot of enemies still remaining as far as I'm aware. So I really do not want to be in a situation where I get myself killed. Let me actually just have a look. Are you serious right now? We have literally only killed that many. Ugh. I am livid right now. I am absolutely livid because the enemy has over 1,200 units and uh, we have not done any damage to them whatsoever. We've done about 400 and that is, that is really awful. That is pretty bad. So I'm actually not sure what I should do. Should I just head in here and just... Uh, let the cards fall where they may. I mean, I don't really want to, uh, as I say, I don't really want to let the AI auto-delegate itself because that's going to result in some very big problems indeed. But I also don't want to tell my infantry just to charge in because they are indeed going to, again, end up taking many, many casualties. But we kind of have to speed this up a little. We're going to have to regroup here real quick because, as you can see, we're actually extremely close to the reinforcement zone of the opponent, and we really do not want them to gain an advantage by being so close to their spawn area. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to move my archers back a little bit here. It seems like we've actually baited the enemy's infantry into coming in to fight the enemy archers, well, uh, uh, allied archers, shall we say, and that is pretty good. That is actually a good thing to happen because if we can bait them into separating from their reinforcement zone any more than they already have, then we will have a pretty decent time of things. And we have now increased our kills to almost 800 and hopefully we'll continue to do so. Let's tell my people to charge in now. Tell my cavalry to charge in. I hope they don't charge in. Oh, they're going the wrong way, of course. Okay, I didn't really want them to go that way, to be honest. I wanted them to actually charge over here and uh, try and eliminate some of these archers, but obviously you can't always get what you want. <laughs> uh, that is very true when it comes to Mountain Blade AI. They, they do generally tend to do that kind of thing. You, you, you think to yourself, oh, they're, they're obviously going to charge forward. 
and then they go, oh no, no, I have to charge after this one enemy Kuzate scout or something like that. And then they all try to kill that one guy for five minutes. Yes, that I can remember it very vividly actually doing something like that in uh, Prophecy of Pendor. And that is a uh, very well-known mod for Warband, for Mountain Blade Warband, if you don't know it. And uh, it is very, uh, very clear in my mind that this particular thing happened where I was fighting, I had uh, a whole bunch of um, horse archers, and uh, well, generally in Warband, the, or the horse archer AI was developed by mod creators, and that is astonishing really because the mod uh, the, the, the horse archer AI is actually really good but obviously there's only so much that you can do so as a result some of the time what would happen is they would run into the wall at the edge of the battlefield there is uh, you know like an invisible wall that stops people from moving and generally uh, that doesn't happen in Bannerlord obviously because there is a uh, shall we say a passable wall um, but it then ends up um, booting you out of the, the battle if you stay out there for too long. You know, that's basically what it is. So it's like out of bounds, pretty much. Um, but that that's not how it was with Warband. So the Horse Archer AI would run into this invisible wall and they would all just stack up um, at the wall. So you could theoretically um, kind of exploit this, this floor in the Horse Archer AI to force the enemy AI into basically just stacking up all at that that edge of the battlefield and that was a very effective means of defeating very difficult opponents because prophecy of pandora is basically uh, extreme hard mode uh, probably not the hardest mod but definitely one of the hardest and one of the most polished if not the most polished mod i've ever played um, in warband but anyway as i was saying the whole thing with the the horse archers. Um, I was in a battle against these guys. They were super, super difficult to, to take out. They had uh, horse archers upon horse archers upon horse archers. And it was very difficult to deal with them. And I had my own cavalry, and I was sending my cavalry against them. And I thought to myself, oh, they're, they're, they're definitely going to charge the majority of units. And then what do they do? 30 guys turn around and they go chasing this one horse archer. And then I, I'm looking at my casualties and I'm seeing the casualties just mount up because obviously I have my infantry and my archers in their, their classic positions. You know, I'm, I'm trying to defend against the overwhelming forces of the opponent. And my infantry are taking massive losses. My archers are being murdered by the enemy's cavalry. And I'm thinking to myself, where's my cavalry? And lo and behold, I go back towards the very beginning of the battlefield from where you actually spawn in. And wh what do I see? I see these 30 guys running after this one horse archer still after about five or maybe even 10 minutes. And I'm thinking to myself, really? <laughs> what are you doing, guys? What are you doing? Get out of there, you know? And so I actually start, you know, commanding them very specifically from that point onward. And we did actually, I think, end up achieving a victory there. Although it is, I, I think we did. I'm actually not sure about that. Don't quote me on it. But anyway, um, that was a very amusing situation to be in, albeit a very frustrating one because you, you really do not want to be in a situation where all of your guys are literally running after one person. Uh, yeah, they just wasted all of their combat strength just chasing after that one guy. That's the reason why I was saying in this particular situation that we were in just now, really did not want to be in that kind of, that kind of trap. You know, you don't want to fall into that trap and have people uh, literally just kind of throw their, their combat strength to the wind and not contribute at all to the victory that is before us. Because generally, we would have been able to... Um, we would have probably been able to murder them much, much easier in that case, but, oh well, never mind. Um, yeah, but if you actually want to see anything about that, there are playlists on the channel somewhere. You know, you just put in uh, Prophecy of Pendor, you know, me, you know, my channel name, and then boom, 
then you'll probably find it pretty easily. Otherwise, okay, so we have almost 500 units still remaining in our army there. We were able to do a pretty significant amount of damage to the Kuzate. I'm pretty sure they're no longer going to have any kind of combat strength after that. Or at least I can hope so. Let me actually just take a quick look at the kingdom screen. Take a look at the diplomacy. Yeah. I mean, what? What, what, what is this? What is, what is that? That is an insane amount. That is 99,000. I think this is probably the biggest combat strength I've ever seen, with the exception of... Hmm, I'm thinking... Pelasaur? I, I actually don't know whether Trader Lord Pelasaur actually had more combat strength because he was capable of basically just trading fiefs back and forth. And uh, if he gained a fief with, I don't know, a thousand units, then that's combat strength, you know? I think it adds to it. As far as I'm aware, I think, it I think fiefs do add to the combat strength of the faction. So that's pretty crazy. And otherwise, anyone here? Uh, no, no one's here that I need to actually um, give any upgrades or instructions to. And let's go over to our army screen. Okay, so let's have a look at what's actually happening here. We have a bunch of vassals. This guy's traveling to Castle and Prila. Perfect. Kanujan doing doing everything that he possibly can right now. Very nice to see him do that. And otherwise, we're just going to be calling for a whole bunch of people. Not too many, but just enough so that we can potentially take tile super, super fast. That's basically all I want to do. And there we are. Okay, so now once this is done and the walls are down, we should be perfectly fine to take this. And then I might even make peace with the Kuzate. It really depends because obviously we still want to allow all of our armies to reach their destinations and try to complete their objectives. Ah, it seems like we're actually declaring war against the Azerai as well. Well, I actually don't mind too much about that because, as you can no doubt tell, we're actually receiving a bunch of prisoners as well uh, on, the, on the deal because I think that um, generally when we do this, uh, I think if some people are around that area or something, I think we do get automatic prisoners because of the situation that those particular vassals are in at the time of the war declaration. So that really makes a huge difference to our overall combat strength. And I think, you know what? I think once these walls are down, I might actually just go for an auto resolve. I'm not entirely sure how that's really gonna go, but I think we have such an overwhelming force here that I should be able to do it without too many difficulties. I just literally want to reduce the amount of food that this army is going to eventually drain from our stocks. And I really, I really don't want to be running around with, I don't know, 30 food or something like that when I would like to continue the campaign against this particular faction. So I think I will be doing that. Uh-huh, yeah, look at that. They're trying for the peace agreement. They're trying for the peace agreement. That's not going to work. Not until all of my friends have completed their objectives. And Amprila is definitely the thing that I'm keeping an eye on. Because if we can take Amprila and take Tyol, that's going to be some really heavy damage done to the combat strength of the Kuzate. And then I will be pretty happy to uh, declare peace with them, actually. I think that's going to be pretty good for us. All right, so there we go. We are now done. Let's send our troops in. I'm going to go right to the end. Boom, look at that. We took down the walls and literally only had 45 casualties. Taking down the walls and building a battering ram and uh, two siege towers really makes a huge difference in your overall success rate when it comes to doing auto-resolves. I know that we've done an auto-resolve before where the walls were not down and we literally suffered so many casualties. So it is definitely a good idea to uh, take them down first. And they seem to actually take them into account nowadays because they used to, in previous versions, they used to not do that. They used to basically be like, ah, oh, we, we don't really mind if you uh, auto-resolve this and the walls are still up. So basically, if you had a strong enough army, you could pretty much just go wherever you wanted to and it would be super easy. But anyway, um, now people are going to be creating some more armies. And I think 
if we take a look, where's Amprila? Amprila is right there. Yeah, the Kuzates still have a very significant uh, portion of the land. So it might very well be that we will not make a peace agreement with them just yet. But I'm going to have to take a look and see where my armies are going. Okay, so they're going to the castle. Oh, okay, apparently... Um, Kanujan ran out of food, or he ran out of cohesion, as he is no longer leading an army, which is very disappointing in my opinion. But hopefully our other friends will be able to take some castles soon. Otherwise, I thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.